Hi there, this is David, and welcome to my review of Moon Remix RPG, exclusively for the Nintendo Switch, available as a digital download. Moon was originally released way back in 1997 on the original PlayStation in Japan, where it quickly became a classic. Unfortunately, it was never translated into English and released into the West until now. I do remember reading about this game on Hardcore Gaming 101 decades ago and just salivating at the chance to play it. Everything I read made it seem magical, unique, and just a hell of a lot of fun. So for many years now, I've been following the translation scene, hoping and praying that it would get picked up. However, that never did become the case, but now we have an even better thing, since it is officially translated and released. Once I heard that the game was being released digitally for the Switch, it quickly shot up on my most wanted list, along with Fire Emblem Three Houses, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Bravely Default 2. The very first day that I got the Switch, I downloaded Moon, excited for what was to come. However, I don't think that I was expecting quite the game that I received. Upon starting the game, you play as a boy who's playing a game, it's essentially a Dragon Quest clone, there's a rainbow bridge, slimes wandering around, and even the Linguar fight from Dragon Quest IV. It's kind of an absurd take on the game. After finishing it, you're then told by your mother to head off to bed, only to then be sucked into the game world, it's like Gameception. It's in the dream where you're told that the people of this world lack love, and it's up to you to gather that love by helping out the townsfolk, exploring and opening up new areas, completing side quests, going on deliveries, and giving gifts. You were decidedly not the hero though. The hero is actually on his own quest, and you're going to be running into him in town, and then also see him multiple times throughout your own quest, where he's out trying to save the world. However, he's really not though, because he's kind of a self-important ass out on a killing spree, slaughtering any monsters unfortunate enough to cross his path. So much so, that he's driving the peaceful monster populations towards extinction. Which then gives you another way to gather love, by reuniting the slain monster souls with their bodies. And when you do so, they're kind of like taken up by a UFO. Once you think that the game is normal, some other absurdity rears its head. The entire game is just so delightfully off-kilter. Each NPC has their own unique schedule as well, kind of similar to like Roddy Out of Stories or Ephemeral Fantasia on the PlayStation 2. For example, the king might be out feeding animals during the day, then he's going to be taking care of his royal duties later on in the afternoon. You might also find a guard who's sleeping during the day because he's out all night drinking at the bar. So it's up to you to use your time wisely and figure out all the various people's daily habits and schedules in order to best increase the amount of love that you can procure in the world. There is a day and night cycle as well as a daily calendar. However, there isn't really a time limit like there is in like the Atelier games. You can really take your time spending as many days as you want, gathering as much love as you possibly can. Don't feel stressed out. This is one of those rare, relaxing games. That being said though, there is still a way to die. From exhaustion. The more love that you gather, the more energy you'll have, so you can travel further and further from the safety of the town. On my very first day, I didn't know this, so I went out exploring and the night fell, then my character began to feel a little bit sluggish, and I thought, oh, I'm probably tired, I should just go back to bed. But I didn't make it there in time, and instead, I got a game over. And I was like, really? They give you a game over for this? I figured it would just kind of like reset the day or you have to wake up in bed, but no, it's like a full-on game over. So the game can be a br brutal in that regard, but... If you plan out your days and incorporate some time management, you'll be fine. Remember the old Earthbound guide where all the characters and the monsters are made out of like clay models? Well, that's brought to life here. Every single NPC is unique and lovingly designed with their own way of speech, their own schedule, their own likes and dislikes, and their own really cool design. You never know what kind of wacky thing you're going to see next. And while we're thinking back, Remember that show Muppet Babies from the 80s? Or even those old Charlie Brown shows? Where the adults just kind of spoke like nonsensical gibberish? Well that's what the voice acting is like here. People will be talking incessantly, but it's all gibberish. And honestly, I kind of like it, because it further accentuates that you're actually in a dream and you can't really understand all that's going on. 
Once you're able to leave the main town and slowly branch out to new areas, you'll come across more places to rest and new areas to explore, each populated by their own NPCs, ghosts, and hidden secrets. There will also be teleport points in the form of flowers that kind of eat you up and spit you out at their roots. Don't expect to go flying through this game. It is a slow burn as you slowly make your way through the castle town, complete the tasks there, get more love, branch out to new areas, complete those tasks, and then get more love to explore even more. One thing that really stuck with me is that whenever you go to bed, a kind of dream within a dream within a dream occurs, and this creepy headless puppet is going to tell you how much more love you need in order to gain to the next level and get more energy. Remember that Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Christmas special from like the 60s with the Island of Misfit Toys? For whatever reason, this decapitated puppet is giving me those vibes. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Every time that you set your head down to sleep, you're going to be getting just that extra little tick of energy to just go that extra little bit further to explore just a little tiny bit more. And to me, that's what I loved about the game. There was no combat to speak of, and no real experience points to gain either. It's really just about making connections and learning about the people who inhabit this fantastical world. If you're a fan of Stardew Valley, Harvest Moon, Radiata Stories, Katamari Damacy, Graffiti Kingdom, Undertale, or even the much maligned Ephemeral Fantasia, you really should check out Moon. This is a hidden gem, though it is not for everyone. However, if you are into those life sim games, or you even just love some exploration, I think that you will love this little strange bird. Well, that's it for my review of Moon RPG Remix for the Nintendo Switch. Have you played the game? Let me know what you think of it in the comments. And if you like to hear what I do on the channel, please consider joining the Patreon for early access videos, joining the Discord to chat and hang out, or heading on over to the Twitch for some streaming fun. I do hope to see you all there. And as always, if you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.